folks that haven't seen it before, from a core stage perspective, it's really a five, four, three, two, one, right? So I got five elements uh, of the main structural elements of this rocket. The engine section at the bottom that has the four uh, shuttle main, old shuttle main engines on it, the hydrogen tank, the, the inner tank, the oxygen tank, and the forward skirt. The forward skirt is where all the avionics reside. So that's what flies the vehicle. That's the brains of the vehicle. There's avionics in the inner tank and in the um, engine section, but those are really uh, helping drive where the fluid goes, the fuel goes, and the oxidizer goes to get it to the to the engines. <clears throat> so that's five. There are four of those five are welded structures, and that's what we're going to see here today. Um, and that's the uh, all of them, but the, uh, the inner tank. Of the welded structures, I really have three components. I've got rings, barrels, and domes. So if you look behind you there. The ring is on the bottom of that dome. The dome is obviously the dome. And then the barrels are what you saw in the high bay in 115 and 15. Uh, and those are the three main components for the welded structures. Mm -hmm. There's also three thicknesses. There's the uh, three-eighths of an inch thick uh, walls for the uh, forward skirt and the engine section. The uh, hydrogen tank is half an inch. And the LOX tank, because liquid oxygen is very, it's the heaviest of, of the gases, is uh, 5 eighths of an inch. The inner tank um, isn't welded. It's, when we get to one, it's the one bolted structure. And the reason it's bolted as opposed to welded is it's so thick that we don't have technology yet to do friction stir welding on something of that thickness yet. Um, and so and it's where it is so thick because that's where all of the main thrust is taken out through the vehicle, through the mm -hmm. inner tank area. Uh, there's also three articles that we're building. So there's a, a weld confidence article, a structural qualification article, and then a flight article. So the weld confidence article is the article that we build first to, to make sure that all of this welding that's done, this full-scale, full-size welding that's done, transfers from the short three-foot panels that we do to define the weld parameters, actually translates to the full scale. So we build a weld confidence article to validate that we can do the weld. Then we cut it apart, pull on it, tug on it, and make sure that the welds have all the right stiffness and strength parameters associated with it. Then the next two pieces I build are actually flight units. One of them is the structural qual article. And so for this first rocket that we're building, I'm really building two rockets. The structural qualification article is the same components, but I'm going to take them up to the Marshall Space Flight Center and I'm going to do all the structural testing on them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bend them, pull them, twist them, uh, compress them to simulate the launch loads to validate that the design that I, of my rocket is actually going to survive the environment that I put it in. Um, and so that validates our design. And then the third article is the flight article, which we'll see those here as we go forward. And then for the two, there's two ways of doing welds. Okay, so fu regular fusion welding is you're basically laying down a uh, material on a weld, on a crack uh, or in a, a joint to uh, produce a weld. Friction stir welding basically takes the two pieces, they join them, they put a bottom up together, and they have a pin that sticks in between there with the right forces, it, and it spins. And, and with the right forces and travel distance, it basically plasticizes the material and fuses it together by friction. Um, and so, and it's a very much more repeatable, consistent weld process. So you can do it one of two ways. When the, when, uh, when the uh, you can either start the weld head and have the weld head move, or you can have the article move. So in the vertical assembly uh, weld center over here, you saw the article, the weld head moved up and yeah. down. On this one, the weld head sticks and the whole turntable rotates. So the article, but so you can do it one of one of two ways. When you have a circumferential weld like you do here, when you're welding 360 degrees around, like you do on this tool and on the big vertical assembly tool, when you're done with the weld, you have a hole left where the pin comes out. And so we do what's called a friction plug in that. So we put a, we put a plug in there, we spin it, we pull it. It's tapered. We pull it out. Mm. It plasticizes the material, creates a torque. It gets to a certain torque value. It stops. We shave it off, and now we got to plug it all. And then the one, the one that's last is our inner tank. That's the only bolt structure. And it's over here on the right. This is the only assembly tool that we have left over from the shuttle era. It was the same tool that was used to build the shuttle um, inner tank uh, there. And then you see the flight inner tank panels are loaded in the tool there. And they are going to be bolted together uh, when we get more into the tool. So there's, a, there's one being built over in the back. Those are simulators. And what the simulators are, when I take a structural qual article, and I, I have to, I can't do a structural test on the whole rocket. There is no facility big enough 
to be able to do that. This rocket is so huge. So I do it in pieces. So I take an oxygen tank, a hydrogen tank, an engine section, an inner tank, and a forward skirt. And I put on the other end of it something to simulate the other interface to the vehicle. So for a LOX tank, oxygen tank for example, I have an aft simulator which simulates the inner tank, and I have a forward simulator which simulates the forward skirt. I load that uh, assembly into the structural test stand, and that's what I do for my structural qualification. Okay. okay. So what that is, that's my engine section weld confidence article. And so you'll notice that there's some holes in there that, have, that are nice and rounded. Those are designed holes. That's where the um, liquid hydrogen and the liquid oxygen would feed into the okay. engine section to get to the engines. But the other ones that are kind of raggedy, that are square, those are the welds. All right, so I've got a long weld, the whole uh, longitudinal weld there. What I've done for my weld confidence, once I built it, is I cut that weld out, I send it to Marshall, uh, and I cut it up into little coupons and I, I test it to validate that all of the weld transfer made it to the full scale weld with the same stiffness parameters, strength parameters, uh, fracture toughness parameters, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so once that's done, we don't have any use for that. Uh, and you see the, the holes cut out of the top there. That was where the ring and the barrel get welded together. I don't have any use for it anymore. So what I'm doing is I'm dual purposing it, right? So I put that in one of my cells and I use that to figure out how I'm gonna spray the primer, which is the green paint. And that's the primer. And on top of that goes either cork for the engine section or the foam, just like the external tank head. Okay, so I need to learn how to do that properly with something that size with the tooling that I have. Okay. Here we have our engine section integration area. So this first barrel here is the actual flight barrel for the first flight. Uh, it's going to get married up to a thrust structure. Okay. And it's waiting its turn in the assembly pit. A little bit more, Dave? In the assembly jig, structural assembly jig, here is my qualification uh, barrel for the engine section. And inside of there, you can't see it, is the thrust structure. The thrust structure is where the engines mount. Okay. So if we go up a little further, so that right now is getting set up for qualification testing. A little bit more data. Now look at the thrust structure there. It's getting, all the uh, internal structure is getting bolted together right now for uh, it to be uh, mated to its simulator and it's shipped to Marshall testing. And then if you look over here, this is the flight uh, thrust structure uh, for the engine section. So it's upside down. Uh, because it's easier to put the engine mounts and the gimbal plates and all of the horse horseshoe cup brackets that we have on there from the top. And so that's on the four uh, intersections there is where the four engines will mount. So when that's finished, it's going to get flipped over, it's going to get loaded into that assembly jig, and the, the other barrel that we saw, the flight barrel, is going to be brought over and, and, and slid down on top of that, and the whole thing will be bolted together. And then they'll start doing all the integration work to uh, put all the plumbing, the avionics, the wiring, all of the uh, ship brackets and shelves, and all of the stuff you got to do to populate the uh, the engine section. This is the vertical assembly center. It's the world's largest weld pool. And so what we do here, remember I told you we had uh, rings, barrels, and domes. This is where they all come together to create an art of flight article. Whether it's an engine section, a tank, oxygen or hydrogen, uh, a uh, forward skirt, uh, uh, or an engine section. So the way this works is you load your first, see that yellow ring up at the top, grabs the first element of your weld, of what you're welding, of your, of your, of your in a tank case, it's the, it's the upper dome. And it loads it in from the top, all right? And it brings it down to where that white platform is and the yellow railing, and that's the weld head, the weld deck. So I've got two weld heads on there. In this case, the, welds, the weld heads travel, the article stays the same, stays put. And so you lower that down, and then on this, this thing that you see in the front called the infeeder, it's rides on an air bearing floor. I bring my next piece in, I put it on the infeeder out here in this open bay, I roll it in, and I lift it up, and I mate the two right at the weld level. And then I run a weld. Then I lift it up, run the infeeder out, grab another, art, uh, another element, bring it in, load it up, to, and weld it again. So it's like a reverse Pez dispenser. Right? Everything gets loaded in from the bottom. Then when your article's done, You'll take the weld deck and it drops down, and then the crane will come overhead and they will lift it out of the out of the out of the uh, assembly center, the vertical assembly center, and move it off into that aisle way, and then they'll run it over into the high bay, the cell A over there, for stacking. Okay. So in that cell over there on the right, we'll take the component out of here, we'll put it in there, we'll take the big lift ring off of it, 
and we'll bring it out into the aisle way here in here, hang it, and we'll attach brackets to it, and then we get two cranes and we break them over. Uh, so it, now it's horizontal. Now I can move it around the factory because otherwise it's too tall to do anything. Yeah. Right. And so what we'll, and so those were all the pieces come off. Now when I got all the pieces together, I'm going to start putting. I'm going to do we'll take them out to the cells for integration. Then I'm going to clean them in this back up over here. we have over here in cell E is the world's largest dishwasher and that cell is designed to clean the inside of the tanks. So I, I have very uh, strict precision cleaning requirements that I need for when I'm putting liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen in the tanks. So that cleans the inside of the tanks. And then I'm going to get, now that I've built these tanks, I got to pressure, I got to proof pressure them. I got to check their proof pressure. So for the oxygen tank, I'm going to do that hydrostatically with water and I'm going to do that in this cell. For the hydrogen tank, because it's so big, I have another building on this site that I take it to, and I do a pneumatic pressure test with that, proof pressure test with that. Once those are all done, they come back into this building, they get all their stuff integrated onto them, the foam is sprayed on them, the primer sprayed on them, I get all of the wiring and the bundling and the plumbing put on them, and I gotta join them together. So they come back in here to the cell A, and I do two joins. I, my building is not tall enough, to be able to, mat, to stack the whole vehicle all at once. So I do it in two sections. I got a forward joint and an aft joint. The aft joint is effectively this big tank, the hydrogen tank and the engine section. I bring it out, break it over, roll it over to final assembly. Then I bring in the inner tank, the oxygen tank, and the forward skirt, stack those, break them over, roll them over to final assembly, and then I do the final mate in the horizontal. Okay. Once I do the final mate in the horizontal, then I put the engines on the back end, I finish all of the uh, systems tunnels, all of the plumbing and the tubing that's on the vehicle, that needs needed on the vehicle, and when it's done, it's a fully functional rocket ready to roll out the door. And at the end of next year, we'll roll that rocket out. For the very first rocket, we'll be sending all the qual articles to Marshall for qualification testing. We'll send the flight uh, rocket out to Stennis in Mississippi to put it on the B B2 test stand, and we're actually going to launch it. It's not going anywhere, but we're going to tie it down to the stand and we're going to fire the engines uh, and validate that the design of our system will launch. And then when that's done, I'll refurbish it because, you know, I've done this violent thing to it by attempting to launch it. We're going to refurbish it and then ship it to Kennedy where it will be integrated with the boosters, the upper stage, and Orion, and then be rolled out to the launch pad. Okay. So for... So the raw materials roll in here, the pieces all roll in here, and what into this factory and what rolls out the other end, that end, is a uh, fully functioning rocket. Awesome. There you have it.